To that land, don't you want to go? To that land, don't you want to go? Where I'm bound, where I'm bound, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Out of mind, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Oh yeah, oh won't you sign me up? Oh the Christian Jubilee. Oh won't you write my name on the road? Oh oh oh, cause I've been changed. I've been changed since the Lord has lifted me. Don't you know I wanna be ready, ready when Jesus comes. So glory, glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, sit our land, way on down, glory, glory, ha, 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 yeah, since I lay my burdens down, way on down, since I lay my burdens down, since I lay my burdens down. Man, it's not fired up to sing with you guys. We are going to be singing Lord God Almighty. Amen. We're going to call upon the Lord. I better hear you call him. Amen. Let's go. Lord God Almighty, oh, 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 gonna sing, sing, sing for you. Oh, you know, Lord God Almighty, I am gonna sing, sing, sing for you. What am I gonna do? Gonna work and pray and sing every day. Gonna work and pray. And sing every day. Oh, Lord God Almighty. Oh, Lord God Almighty. Oh, oh, gonna love, love, love for you. Love, love, love oh, you know, Lord God Almighty. Oh, Lord God Almighty. Oh, hey. Gonna love, love, love for you. Love, 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 love. I know I'm gonna work and pray and love every day. Gonna work and pray and love every day. Lord God Almighty, oh, Lord God, I know Almighty. I'm gonna share my faith for you. you faith oh, you know, Lord God, oh, Lord God Almighty, hey, oh, I'm gonna share my faith for you. I'm gonna work and pray and share. Oh, gonna work and pray and share every day. Oh, Lord God Almighty. Oh, I'm going to serve, serve, serve for you. Serve, serve, serve for you. Oh, Lord God Almighty. Oh, Lord God Almighty. I know I'm going to serve, serve, serve for you. Serve, serve, serve. Hey, you going to work and pray and serve it. Every day. Oh, I'm going to work and pray and serve it. Every day. I cry out, Lord God Almighty. Oh, oh, Lord God Almighty. Oh, oh, we cry out, Lord Well, I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. Oh, I love to praise, love to praise Oh, you better tell me why. He is my rock. He is my rock. I said, my, my he is my wheel. In the middle of the wheel, I know he'll never, he'll never, 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 never let me down. He is a friend. He is a friend. Oh, that you have. Hallelujah! I love praise name. Oh, hallelujah! I love praise name. Oh, hallelujah! Hallelujah! I love praise. Oh, I love to praise His holy name. Come on! We're gonna be singing "Let It Rise." Come 
Let the spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Somebody say, oh, 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 let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, oh, oh. Guys, let's have a seat. Great to be here in San Francisco. And uh, uh, great to have this incredible view here. But let's go ahead and get into the Bible. Let's turn our Bibles to Psalm chapter 95. Let's go, Christian. Psalm chapter 95. And uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Christian, and I have the pleasure, alongside of my beautiful wife, Devin, to lead the Santa Cruz region of the San Francisco Church. And uh, uh, it's great to, great to be here to worship with you guys. But in Psalm chapter 95, we're going to pick it up right here in verse 1. The Bible reads, Come, let us sing for joy. It was awesome to hear that joyful singing right there. It says, To the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth all the way down to Silicon Valley and the mountain peaks all the way up there to Marin Headlands where I had the pleasure of proposing to my incredible wife right here. It says, the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it. His hands formed the dry lands. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Come on, and you know, here the, the Bible tells us, says, hey, man, God created the mountain peaks. Right. He, he created the valleys. He created the sea. Not for us just to, to sit here and, and, and selfishly use, but that we may use it to glorify him. Yeah. And right here, we, we have a million dollar view. There are people who literally give tens of thousands of dollars to come right here to get a picture of this right here. Yep. And we have such a beautiful place here in the Bay to live. God's blessed us abundantly. Yeah. Let it not be in vain, but let us give our hearts as we worship God oh. this morning. Amen. Oh. Now I'm going to allow Devin to welcome the ladies right here. Good morning, ladies. 
I love, I love how much the scripture just talks about beauty and the beauty that we can see around us. What a beautiful sight this morning. Um, and of course, the ladies are looking beautiful this morning, all bundled up and cute with fall vibes. Um, but I think what the Bible says about beauty, especially for us, is that it comes from the inside. And I have to steal a line from Kyle from the huddle up this morning. It might be a little cold out here, but let us not get cold in our hearts, right? And if you're feeling a little cold this morning, you're certainly going to be fired up, not only from the fiery lesson from Kwaku Sarkodie, not only are your hearts going to be warm from the seven who have come to be baptized this morning, but they're certainly also going to be warmed by the celebration of life for our dear sister, Noemi. And so let's come and let our hearts be warmed this morning. Amen, family. Let's warm our hearts. Let's warm our souls. And we want to welcome you to the toasty congregational service of the San Francisco Bay International Christian Church. Amen. And there's no better way than to usher in a service than to have somebody who just a few weeks ago preached a toasty lesson right here for the singles ministry, Jeremiah Lindley, to come pray for our service. All right, let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we want to come before you and lift you up on this beautiful day and this great opportunity to come out and worship you here in San Francisco by the Bay Bridge, God. Yes, God. Father, we pray you'll be with every aspect of our service today, God. Please uh, inspire and fire up our brother, Kwaku Sarkodie, as he delivers the message of God in a great and powerful way, God. Father, we also thank you for the opportunity, God, is we know the angels in heaven are rejoicing. Come on. As our sister Noemi Hernandez, God, is at home with them now in yes, heaven, Father. God. Mm -hmm. And Father, we're That's grateful that. for the opportunity together we're for a great celebration of life and the impact that she's had here on this earth with her family in this city, God, and on our church, God. Father, we love you, and we pray, God, that you are glorified today. Mm -hmm. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, good morning, family. How's everybody doing today? Yeah. Well, now it's a very important time of service. This is where we go over the announcements. Amen. Uh, first and foremost is Jose and Tori are dating now. Where are they at? Amen. Where's he at? He's running away. He's over there. That guy over there. Amen. Uh, another uh, piece of probably good news with the weather this morning, this will be our last park service for 2021. Amen. Uh, we're coming out of the pandemic, and uh, we've, we've utilized our park services while we've transitioned back into facilities, but now our campuses are back open. We had our, our first campus ministry Devo on a campus last Friday night at Cal State East Bay. It was awesome. We had 170 people out for that campus devotional. It was awesome. So next week, we'll be at the Double Tree, and then we'll start having our super regional services uh, in facilities, whether it be at campuses, in a facility, or in a hotel ballroom. So we won't be back at parks this year. Amen. And then I do hope that everybody watched uh, the September Surge edition of the Good News Network. It's on YouTube, but please watch it as you can see all that God is doing around the movement in the 21st century. It's awesome to see what God's doing there. Amen. And then we have our Mercy Blood Drive coming up. Uh, once a year now we're doing this, and uh, I have the honor of directing on a national scale, so it's a lot of work, uh, but we're having 35 blood drives go on around America. We're trying to raise 1,400 pints of blood, which will save over 3,000 lives. So it's a huge cause for uh, uh, me to great need, and we're going to have two blood drives here in the Bay Area. Thank you so much to the Joneses who do our, our mercy directing here locally. And Earl is really behind the scenes, the director of the National Blood Drive. He does just about everything. Uh, there he is over there. And um, we are going to have one on the 20th of this month. So it's just around the corner. And then we're going to have one on the 10th of December. So please, more information will be coming out about those. And let's participate. If you're going to uh, give blood, we need people to start signing up for that. And we'll start to uh, retrieve all those names for the respective regions. Amen. 
And then tonight, we're going to have a, a going away send off party on Zoom for our dear brother and sister, the Malabanans. Uh, Jen and Ken have been such a, uh, a pillars in this church here, and they'll be going on to greener pastors there in Sacramento. Uh, so they're not going that far away. We'll still see them regularly, but we'll be having a going away party for them on Zoom. That's 7 p.m. tonight, and the Zoom links went out in all the group chats, so you should have those. Uh, we closed up our first principles classes last Wednesday night. And let's give it up for uh, Cruising for Christ. They won the first place prize. And uh, that's awesome. We'll do it again next year. But next year, we will not all be together. They'll be done by Super Region, so that'll be awesome. And then Special Missions is upon us. We've already raised $40,000 for Special Missions. Our final turn-in will be on November 21st. So please, today, uh, let's give a lot of us got that stimulus check this last week. For those of us who have kids and whatnot, uh, let's go ahead, if you can. All right, some of you did. Uh, but let's knock out our special missions. Let's have a huge turn in this week. Amen. And then what is it all about? Souls. Uh, we planted about 10 churches this last year. The last one to go out will be at the EMC. I know who's going to the EMC this year. She's fired up. Look at those two sisters. They're like, I know there's a group of singles with very little advice are going. Uh, but uh, they're fired up. A Angel's going. She let us know this morning. Now I'm joking. She, she, she talked to us about it. But uh, at the EMC in Paris... Uh, they're going to be sending out the final mission team of 2021, which will go to Edinburgh, Scotland. So that's awesome. Next year, we're planting 13 churches, five in the States, and the other eight will be international plantings. Uh, so there's so much to do. Uh, we're, we're not at uh, the end of world evangelism. We're not at the middle. We're probably not at the beginning, but it has been said, maybe we're at the end of the beginning. But we still have so many church plantings to do, uh, so much to be done, so many people to reach. Uh, let's knock out our special missions because every single time it's about souls. And this last week, we saw four more souls baptized here in San Francisco. And uh, several family members, as we saw Manuel baptized in the San Francisco or the Bridge, Bridge Super Region. And then Jessica was baptized in Contra Costa. Allie was baptized in Silicon Valley. And then Robinson was baptized in Santa Cruz. And this week, we, we've already had one baptism, but we have seven more who have come to get baptized today. As Jesse was already baptized in Silicon Valley. And then Jackie's going to get baptized in Santa Cruz. Nicholas... Anaya, Zeta, and Alba in San Francisco are going to get baptized. Rachel's going to get baptized in San Jose. And Ray Lynn is going to get baptized in Hayward. Amen. So God is doing great things. Eight baptisms this week. That's the most baptisms we've ever had in one week period. So uh, I hope that you are inspired. I hope that you're fired up to see what God is doing amongst you and through your faith. And today is quite special because it is a total celebration. We are going to be celebrating those who are going to receive a birth into Christ. And then we're going to be celebrating our dear sister, Noemi, who's now gone on to glory. So it's an incredible, incredible service, an incredible happening to see what God's doing. And I hope you guys are fired up. Now uh, we're going to have the singers come up here on the stage uh, so that we can celebrate taking the Lord's Supper together as a family. I love you guys very much. Here we go. Yeah. Come on, fingers. Come on. I'm gonna see this slowly up. We're gonna sing Lead Me to the Rock, amen. Come on, JP. Oh, look at that. 
this all in a while. Nice. Nods. Nods. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. church I'm uh, so encouraged that I get a chance to share a sermonion with you this morning on, uh, I know everybody's been asking me what is a sermonion first off it's a combination of a sermon and a communion and so what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get a chance to share some scriptures with you and at the end of those scriptures I'll say a prayer we'll pass the trace we'll get a chance to focus on the death burial resurrection of Jesus and that will be a communion message. I'm so encouraged that I get a chance to preach the word this morning. Our very last park service, we get to have the entire congregation right here at Chrissy Fields, right underneath the Golden Gate Bridge. And I know definitely for many of us, this is a special place. This is hallowed ground because it's upon this very ground that the San Francisco Bay International Christian Church was founded. Tell me in your Bibles, if you would, to Luke chapter 6. Let's go, Quaker. Another oh. reason why park services are quite special is because it reminds me of this passage in Luke chapter 6. Starting here in verse 17, we read these words. Jesus went down with them and stood at a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there, and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the coastal region around Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and of their diseases. Those troubled by impure spirits were cured, and the people all tried to touch him, because power was coming from him and healing them all. Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. 
Blessed are you who are hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, and they insult you, and they reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day. Leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven. And the church said, Amen. Luke chapter 6 is what the evangelist, the Hebrew writer Luke, claims the sermon upon the plain. And I will picture it, it would be Jesus surrounded by his disciples and a crowd of people from all over Judea, Tyre, Sidon, and Jerusalem who had gathered with him to hear the words of God that he was speaking. And the Bible tells us that all the people were crowding around him and they were rushing to touch him because power was going out from him to heal all of them. They had come to him because we were hoping for a refuge in the dark, dark world we were living in. And so when we gather together here at Chrissy Field, it's so encouraging to see the kingdom of God gather together because we want to sit at the feet of Jesus. We want to be healed by Jesus. We want to be moved by Jesus because we know that in Jesus is true blessedness. And just like it was here in Luke chapter 6, the disciples of Jesus, the people who wanted to hear Jesus, were crowded around him listening. There are other people scattered around the plain all over who were indulging in their very own lives. Yeah, come on, bro. Without a care or a wonder or contemplation that the Messiah, the Son of God, God in the flesh, was right there, less than a mile away from them. This is the existence that you and I actually get a chance to participate in. That on a Sunday morning when everybody else is going about their life, we get to gather together because we know that in Jesus is true blessedness. And Jesus basically makes a difference and it makes a distinction between those that are listening to him and those who had no time to listen to him. He says, blessed are you who are poor. Yours is the kingdom of God. And does that not describe you and I this morning? God says, I know that you are trying to pull together enough money every month to pay your rent. I know that every single day you are struggling for money to pay your bills, but I'm here to tell you, you are blessed in the face of the Lord because yours is the kingdom of God. He says, blessed are you who hunger right now. He's talking about the campus brothers who look around them at all the people sitting in the expensive restaurants and were eating to their heart's delight and you look in the cupboard and you're like, there's only one more packet of top ramen left. And in that moment, a test of Christianity happens. Should I sneak into the kitchen and cook this and just eat it by myself? Or should I let the other brothers know there's one more pack of top ramen left? Jesus says, truly you are blessed, for you will be satisfied. He looks at our congregation and he says, blessed are you who weep right now. Maybe your heart is broken by the state of your heart, by the state of your family, by the state of your life. Maybe your heart is broken and you weep every day because of how challenging your life is. Or maybe your heart is broken every single day because you listen to the news and you see all the devastation that is in the world today. And you're hoping that a Messiah, a Savior might be sent out. He says, you are blessed. Because though you weep right now, later you shall laugh. And he says to those that will be his disciples, Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, when they insult you, when they reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. He says, Rejoice and leap in that day because great is your reward in heaven. As a crowd of his disciples was gathered around him, he wanted them to know true blessedness. And their true blessedness, their joy was not because of their outward adornment or the money in their bank accounts, but it was because they had a relationship with him. 
They were truly blessed because they found it important to make time to hear the word of God that was being preached to them by the Son of God. And so today Jesus will say to us that we are truly blessed of all men here in the Bay Area because we've deemed it worthy, we've deemed it valuable, we think it's important to gather on a Sunday morning to hear the word of God. How did we get here? Go to Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5. The Apostle John sees a vision of heaven. And he says in verse 1, I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll. But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and I wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside of it. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and his seven seals. Then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. The lamb has seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat upon the throne. Skip on down with me to verse 9. And they sang a new song saying, You're worthy to take the scroll and to open the seals because you were slain and with your blood you purchased men, persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom of priests to serve our God and they will reign on the earth. The Apostle John sees a vision of heaven. And in heaven he sees God upon his throne, the Almighty, the majestic creator of the universe. And in his hand is a scroll that has been sealed with seven seals. It's completely sealed. No one can open it to let us know what's the destiny of man. No one can open it to know what is in the mind of God. What's the great wisdom of God? Come on, bro. For the salvation of souls. Yeah. And John seeing this weeps. And he weeps. Just like Jesus had mentioned. That as disciples, when we look at this world and we see the abuse, we see the destruction, our hearts cry out. We're hoping, where is God in all of this commotion? But we're not the only ones who weep. But we're not the only ones who are going to smile. Because an elder comes up to John and he says, don't weep. The lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus Christ has triumphed. He has the power, he has the right to open those seals so we can see what's in the scroll. And I think most of us, just like John, as we hear those words, our anticipation is a majestic lion that's going to come upon the scene and grab the scroll from God's hand and open it. But that's not what happens. He says, a lamb, which just in case you don't know, is a baby sheep that looks like it's been slain. It has a mortal wound, shows up. And that's the form in which he's able to take the scroll and open the seals. And then they sing a new song. They sing in praise and adoration of Jesus because it says, you have triumphed and because of that you are worthy to take the scroll and open the seals because with your blood you purchased for God people from every tribe and language and people and nation. That's how Jesus triumphed. He was in humility. His desire to lay down his life and shed his blood to purchase your salvation. His desire that he would love you and I more than his own life, his own existence, to purchase you and bring you out of the darkness and bring you into the light. That's why Jesus is worthy to unlock the scroll. That's why Jesus is worthy of all glory, all honor and adoration. But we stand here as those that have been redeemed. When we sing songs and we rejoice in the salvation we have, we're singing the songs of the redeemed. We are the ones that have been purchased. And God would determine that you and I, from day forth, would live like those that have been redeemed. That our lives would set an example to everybody we come into contact with. That's why we have a service like this on a Sunday morning.
That's why we celebrate in the resurrection of seven incredible souls that will come and stand before you today, turning their back on the darkness so they can also be purchased and come into the light. But this message is not just for you and I. The songs of the redeemed is not just for you and I's enjoyment. It's so the world may hear because it's the message of humility through your life to a lost world. Turn with me to Job chapter 33. In Job chapter 33, Elihu, a young man who had heard the discussion between Job and his three friends, who had sat in the back hoping that the wisdom of God would prevail in this incredible contest of verbal uh, 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 conversation. But none of that happened. Because what was the question that Job was trying to ask of God? Why me? Isn't that a question many of us have repeated in the most challenging times of our lives? It's not that we would wish ill on anybody else on this planet. But sometimes in our most trying times, in the midst of our tears, we ask God, why me? And the message of the gospel is to let you and I know it wasn't just you and I who cry, why me? The millions, the billions on this planet cry, why me, every single day. And this is what Elihu speaks of. Look with me in verse 13. Elihu says, Why do you complain to God? As if he does not respond to a person's words. For God does speak. Now one way, now another, though no one may perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night when deep sleep falls on people as they slumber in their beds. He may speak in their ears and terrify them with warnings to turn them from wrongdoing and keep them from pride. He preserves them from the pit, their lives from perishing by the sword. Or someone may be chastened on a bed of pain with constant distress in their bones so that their body finds food repulsive and their soul loathes the choicest meal. Their flesh wastes away to nothing and their bones once hitting now stick out. They draw near to the pit and their life to the messengers of death. Wow. Elihu says to Job, the people on this planet cry, why me? And they wonder, why does God not act on behalf of his people? Why does God not respond to our prayers? And he's like, God does speak one way or another. It might be in a dream. It might be in a nightmare. It might be in sickness. It might be in challenges. But God is screaming salvation in the ears of all mankind. It might be that even right now, God is trying to get your attention. And he says, when life gets hard, it is the messenger of God to capture the attention of people that they may turn to him. And we look at our world and the pandemic that we have just come through. And some people are wondering, why? Why now? Why? In the book of Job, who has but one answer. God is trying to get your attention. The pandemic that has ravaged the world, that has seen millions lose their lives, that has the economy in an uncertain place, is God's response to a hurt world trying to get man not to ask why me but to choose him verse 23 he rounds off and he says yet if there's an angel at this man's side a messenger one out of a thousand sent to tell him how to be upright. If he is gracious to that person and says to God, spare me from going down to the pit, I have found a ransom for them. Then their flesh will be renewed like a child's. Then they'll be restored as in the days of their youth. Then that person can pray to God and find favor with him. They'll see God's face and shout for joy. He'll restore them to full well-being and they'll go to others and say, I have sinned. I have perverted what is right, but I did not, do what, I did not get what I deserved. God has delivered me from going down to the pit. And I shall say, live and enjoy the light of life. God does all these things to a person twice, even three times, to turn them back from the pit that the light of life may shine on them. Wow. Isn't that incredible? That in the book of Job, which is believed to have been one of the earliest scriptures written, 
that Elihu would put in here an incredible prophecy of how God would act in the life of mankind from generation to generation to generation. He says, look around you. Look at the commotion. Look at the devastation. It is God trying to get man's attention. And what God is hoping is that maybe there might be an angel. Maybe a person, one in a thousand, who will come to a person and say, I have found a ransom for you. Leave your life of sin and turn to God. That's why it's amazing we're here at Chrissy Field. Because all the people here in the Bay Area, all the other people in Chrissy Field who are not participating in the service, what Elihu will let you and I believe is that they are hoping that there might be one in a thousand who will walk up to them and say, I have found a ransom for you. Wow. In Job's day, it was Elihu. Up in heaven, it was Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the lamb who was slain. But right here in the Bay Area, it is time for you and I to respond. We will be the ones. We will be the one out of a thousand that will proclaim, I have found a ransom for you. It is in the death and the burial of Jesus Christ. That is the ransom that's going to pay the price, that's going to purchase your soul from the clutches of Satan and bring you into the kingdom of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And it's a gift that keeps on giving, that gets paid for, because he says when that person takes the ransom note that has been purchased for them, they too will go to another person and they too will proclaim, I have been redeemed. I had perverted my ways in my youth, but I did not get what my sins deserved. I have been rescued. You too can have a ransom if you will change. On, when we gather together as the kingdom of God, as the body of Christ, we get a chance to celebrate the salvation and the redemption made possible by the blood of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. On, but it's a gift that we're supposed to pay forward. It's a gift that we're supposed to take to the ends of the earth because there are people waiting for you and I, hoping for that one person out of a thousand who will not just pass them on by, but will come to them and say, I have a ransom for your soul. Let's close out in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Paul says in verse 14, Thanks be to God, who always leads us as captives in Christ in the triumphal procession and uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of Him everywhere we go. For we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. To the one we are the aroma that brings death, to the other an aroma that brings life. And who is equal to such a task? Unlike so many, we do not peddle the word of God for profit. On the contrary, in Christ, we speak before God with sincerity as those sent from God. We are the one out of a thousand. Paul says, thanks be to God for this indescribable, incredible gift that we can be led forth in the triumphal procession of Christ. Jesus has won the victory and he's leading a triumphal procession of souls that he has redeemed all the way from this earth to heaven. And you and I get the chance to be a part of that procession. But as we pass through the earth, in every city that we will go, we are the one in a thousand, nay, one in a million, that are spreading forth the fragrance of the knowledge of God. And he says, thanks be to God for this indescribable gift because amongst those that are living on this planet, we are the aroma of God. A pleasing aroma to the nostrils of God that we, just like his son Jesus, are willing to give up whatever it takes. Are willing to sacrifice whatever we need to do to bring redemption, to bring salvation here to the Bay Area. But he says it's miraculous. Because to one, we may be the smell of death. There are some people who are hearing and seeing us right now, and they're going to walk past us. They want nothing to do with this. They think it's weird that we would gather on a Sunday morning 
oh, in our classrooms, in our workplaces, in our neighborhoods. People look at us and they think like, wow, what is wrong with you? I want nothing to do with you. <laughs> but for that one in a million who sees you and me, who hears our message, who hears our testimony of how God redeemed us from the perversion of our youth. For the sake of that one person who sees us and we're not the smell of death, but the aroma of life. Come on, bro. For that one person, Jesus chose to die. And for that one, you and I will lay down our life again and again. Let's pray for the communion. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for the sacrifice of Jesus, purchasing our souls from the brink of destruction and bringing us into the everlasting kingdom of our great God. Father, I pray that at this time, as we contemplate the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus, as we think about how Jesus was willing to lay it all down so we may have life, I pray that we will remember that it's a gift that we get to pay for it. Yep. It's a gift that we get to take to the ends of this earth because a ransom has been given, blood has been spilt, and souls must be purchased. And I pray that our voices will ring out to the ends of the earth, that your sacrifice will not be done in vain. It's in Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. Amen. Let's get it for Quaker for that beautiful message. We'll be singing Sanctuary number 440. If you have a songbook. <clears throat>
Amen. Turn your Bibles to the book of Mark. It's a time in our service where we talk about giving back, but we don't just talk about it, we be about it, right? That was bad English, but uh, amen. You guys understand what I'm saying. Mark chapter 12, verse 41. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowds putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw large amounts. Let's pause there for a sec. Jesus didn't just do things, uh, I I, I believe it anyway, like just happenstance. I think I'm just going to chill and people watch. Although I I love to people watch. I was commenting to Devin when we were up there in the pre-service huddle, I was like, I like pre-service huddles because I like just wa- looking at people, <laughs> looking at their faces and stuff. <laughs> Who's judging me because I was late or because I'm wearing a bright jacket or whatever, you know what I mean? Oh. <laughs> this is my winter stuff, guys. It's cold. Yep. But um, Jesus was intentional about the things that he did. Come on, bro. And in his intentionality, he sat down opposite the place there's a pl- ton of places at the temple he could have stopped. What about prayer? Like, let's see how people's prayer lives were. You know what I mean? Let, let's, let's stand opposite the rabbis that were teaching. You know what I mean? No, he sat by the offering tray. And he's watching. And he sees rich people putting in large amounts. Which is awesome. Hey, if you're rich, give large amounts, right? It's not a bad thing. Verse 42, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins. Anybody have any copper coins on them? I know we're in a coin shortage. At least the drive through at McDonald's says that. Anybody got a couple copper coins? A couple pennies? Worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, truly, I tell you, this poor widow, so he understood her plight. She understood that that she didn't have a lot to give, has put more into the treasury than all the others. Than everybody else who I've observed, this poor widow put in more. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. You know, there's a phrase in the business world that says, money follows value. You provide more value to the marketplace, you will receive more money from the marketplace. Think about it. Are you willing to go somewhere? Maybe the college students might not. Are you willing to go somewhere where you pay a little bit more money for something because it's more valuable to you? (laughs) Those of you that have Apple products, have Apple products because they carry more value. No matter how you feel about that statement, there is truth to that. I have gone through more Microsoft computers in my work life, and I'm still using the same Apple computer that I've had since 2009. Now it sounds like a jet engine taking off every time I use it. But it still works, amen? So money follows value. And to her, and I was thinking about this as I was sitting over here. To her, what's hilarious is that she wasn't worshiping in a place as like cool as this. Like if you go back to like uh, Second Temple Judaism, it wasn't like fired up like this. It was very proper. It was dutiful. It was... You know what I mean? I mean, you just, just think about it. Very Old Testament, you know what I mean? We're very New Testament. And we're, some of us, like, aren't even fired up to give today. And this is awesome. You know what I mean? I'm not down on anybody because sometimes I get the same way. But it's how valuable it is to us. I'll spend... $2,800. Now, my wife won't let me, so I can't. But the new Apple computers are coming out on Tuesday, you know what I mean? And I would love to spend $2,800 on a new Apple computer with the M2X chip and all this craziness. 
<laughs> because that sometimes is more valuable to us. And it's it's this is this is welcome to America. Welcome to first uh, you know first world problems here. Yet I know brothers and sisters all around the world that are like this poor widow that give in give to God weekly. Because, it, guys, it's not like they don't give in the Philippines or they, they don't give in, 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 in uh, Congo or they don't give in these places that we sometimes deem as, as more poor than us. They still give weekly contribution there. And God sometimes can say, you know, their giving is actually way more valuable than our giving. Because we give out of our wealth they give out of their poverty. And I was just sitting here going, man, how much do I value this? Come on, bro. And if, if I value this, my money will follow the value. Just like this widow. And uh, I, I just, that's just my personal reflection. I, you know, I got pieces of paper that I was writing because what I had didn't work for me. You know what I mean? And so that's just my personal reflection this morning as, as I give, as my wife and I give. That's, that's, that's how I want to give today. And so let's pray that our hearts are there. If they're not, let's get them there. And if they are, amen. Let's be fired up about that. Let's pray. God, we love you. We thank you so much for what you've given us. Uh, this beautiful place, this beautiful space, even though it's a, a little chilly, it's such a beautiful setting for us to be able to worship out here in public and to be a shining light to those all over the city, those walking around, those running and jogging and all these kinds of things. But God, we're just so grateful for the kingdom. We're so grateful for our salvation. We're so grateful for even your common grace that everybody gets to just breathe right here, right now. And God, we want our money to follow that value because you are so valuable. And God, I pray that we can reflect on the, the statements that Jesus made about this poor widow that gave in everything she had. God, not that we would, uh, you know, somehow put ourselves in a, in a, in a position uh, that, 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 that's bad, but that we would give out of the value that you have given to us. We pray all this in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hey, my family, if it's in your heart to give, you can go to www.sfbicc.org forward slash giving. We're going to sing soon and very soon. Soon and very soon, we are going. Soon and very soon and very soon, we are going. Soon and very soon and very soon. We are go and we're singing hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see no more crying there. No more crying there. We are go no more crying there. We are go no more crying, no more crying there. We are go and we're singing hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see no more dying, no more dying there. We are go no more dying there. We are go no more dying there. We are go and we're singing hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the and we're singing hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the and we're singing hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the King. We'll be transitioning into the baptisms in a moment, but let's sing another song to get our hearts close to God. Amen. I feel good, good, good. I feel good, oh yes, my Lord. Because there's something about the Spirit of Jesus that makes me feel good, good, good. Oh yes, I feel love, love, love. Woo! I feel 
feel love, oh yes, my Lord, because there's something that the Spirit of the makes me feel love, love, love. Oh, I got hope, hope, hope. I got hope all in my soul because there's something that the Spirit of Jesus makes me feel hope, hope, hope. Oh, yes, and I can sing, sing, sing. You can sing, oh yes, my Lord, because there's something about the Spirit of Jesus that makes me sing good, good, good. Now do you feel good, good, good? I feel good, oh yes, my Lord, because there's something about the Spirit that makes me feel good, good. Oh yes, and I feel strong. I feel so glorious, my Lord, because there's something about the Spirit, Jesus, makes me like grizzle. No, so. Oh, yes, and I got joy, joy, joy. I got joy all in my soul, girl, something about the Spirit, Jesus, that makes me feel joy, joy. Oh, because there's something about the Spirit of Jesus that makes me feel joy, 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 joy. Amen, guys, have a seat. <laughs>